Hello one and all, my name is John Clare, this is John's Dark Art, and as always, you are very welcome. Now, today's piece that I want to talk about is a bit of an old one, but a good one, I think. It's actually one of my better pieces, I feel. And it's the first piece that I completed on this very iPad when I bought it back in 2018. The piece itself is called Odin in a Flat Cap, mainly because it's a self-portrait of yours truly, wearing a flat cap as I want to do, with two gigantic ravens. And this is to signify Hugin and Moonin. Can you sense a theme in a lot of my artwork? Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump into the time-lapse replay. I'm gonna walk you through the creation of the piece and why I did it and whatnot. And we're gonna do that now. Okay, so here we are, we're in Procreate. And I'm just gonna find Odin and Flat Cat for you now. Here we go. Now, as usual, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to go into canvas information. And this piece, all right, the date there, the 15th of November 2018, this is when I started it. That's kind of pertinent because I bought this iPad Pro, this 12.9 inch iPad Pro, basically on the day it was announced. About, I think about two or three weeks later, it arrived in the post and I had myself a brand new 12.9 inch third generation iPad Pro and I've had it ever since. So I've had this for about five years and it's done me proudly in that time. I mean, I think I've got my money's worth from it many times over at this stage. Also, and for this piece here, I think it's quite interesting because the track time, the track marks, which is 28,586, track time 45 hours and four minutes, isn't entirely accurate. And the reason why that is, I'll explain as, we, as I walk you through the image. So let's hop back out of that now, now and let's go into time-lapse replay. Okay, so as you can tell, this is, well, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a portrait of my good self when I wasn't quite carried as much timber. Yeah, it's a very loose, I mean, like I said, with all my drawings, I start very loosely and then I kind of tighten up and hone it as I go. And I think, to be perfectly honest with you, I think I did quite well with this. Like, especially when you're drawing yourself, because, you know, I don't think anyone, unless you're like hugely narcissistic, really enjoys drawing themselves. But for me, it was a case of like, what I was trying to communicate at the time was almost like defiance or, I just come out from a pretty dark period in my life. And I wanted to kind of try and move forward. And for me, this piece kind of typifies that in a lot of ways. Also, it shows my progression as an artist, especially as a digital artist. And I like to think that, I mean, there's a lot of refinement with this piece. Even this little section here that you see me draw and reworking and going over that must have taken me about what five six seven hours to do until i was happy with it you may be wondering where the bloody hell this dog's come from well initially the initial idea for it was for me and this dog to be snarling at each other if you like kind of reminiscent of the pre a piece i spoke about previously conflict where the the, the the tiger and the wolf were snarling at each other to show conflict. I think this was like, like a progenitor to that idea, but it didn't really work because in terms of what, the way, you know, the way I drew this dog compared to the way I was positioned, it didn't work. But what the great thing is though, when it comes to working with digital media, just because something doesn't work in one piece doesn't mean you can't work somewhere else. Like for, for an example, if I hop into this one here, now you may notice that's the dog in question. That in inspired me to do another piece. I had, it gave me another idea, another kind of foundation to create something else further down the line uh, without having to lose that dog or just, just as a singular joy, it could be part, be part of a more meaningful piece. So that's what this one here is. Is, is the time that's still available for this one? It is. So you can see I drew myself out and I just inserted him afterwards because he was already there and ready. And all I had to do then was just, you know, cut around myself to have him in there. It's fairly straightforward in the end. So if we go back into this one here, back into timelapse replay. So yeah, that was really cool. I mean, I was able to kind of reuse that, reuse that drawing into another piece. And instead what I did was I used these ravens. This is the thing is like a lot of people when they look at you know, my drawings, they see the end result and they think, oh wow, you know, you must be really good. And I am. But, <laughs> but the fact is like, you gotta bear in mind with, with a lot of these drawings, I mean, you gotta, they've gotta come from somewhere. You gotta, you gotta build them up. And that's what I did here. And without hopefully sounding too kind of self-aggrandizing, I think I did a pretty good job, you know, building up the details and everything else. So let's like, for instance, with these feathers, 
you can see that I'm kind of like, what I'll do is I'll make a few cursory marks to kind of like indicate the structure of the feather. Then I'll go in again and, and kind of develop on it more and more and more to hone and finalize the details. The same over here. So also what you'll bear in mind with this reference, this particular reference, if I remember rightly, I'm going back about five years now, so my memory not might not be all what it should be, but still, like that second wing from what I remember, wasn't shown within the initial reference, but I felt it was important for the composition that it was in there. So using this wing as a reference and using other images as references, I was able to kind of draw the wing on the opposite side. Also the same applies to the feet there. Initially it was gonna, they were gonna be clawed out like that, but then I decided to change it and change it again and change it again until I was happier with them. And I think this is where they ended up in the end. And I think it works out quite well. The same with the feathers here. Much the same way again, I'm just kind of, I'll rough them out, put some cursory lines in to indicate where the structure of the feather and then develop over the top to the point I'm happy with the finished result. And then, oh wait a minute, where's this raven come from? I'm gonna answer that question for you now in a minute. So what I did there was, that drawing was basically imported from another drawing, which I'm gonna show you now in a second, half finished. So I didn't finish the feet. Once I'd imported it, then I finished the feet off in it finished off the shading, finalized the details, and Robert's your mother's brother, done. Where the second raven on my shoulder, where that one came from, is up here. Now, I recently finished this off actually, because it was kind of sit sitting in my to-do list for a while. I thought it'd be nice to eventually to kind of just finish this off as a singular piece. But if I go back into the time lapse replay, and if you wonder what those two lines are, Basically what that means is, this was the initial size of the canvas. Again, if you go into your canvas information. Right, so you wanna to go to dimensions. It'll give you like the overall size of the image, so the physical size and everything else. But what you can do, like for instance, you can go, when you're initially setting up a, a new canvas, you do have your presets. But if you just wanted to add a new one and set up some new dimensions, you can do that. So you can size it up by pixels, by dots per inch. But the size of your canvas in Procreate, at least anyway, like because this is an older iPad Pro, like because it has less RAM than the newer ones, like the new M2 iPad Pro is kind of up to about 16 gigabytes of RAM. And because they have got more RAM, you can have more layers. But the problem is I think this one has four gigabytes of RAM. So that, that hampers me in terms of how many layers that I can actually use. I can still use more than enough for my work, so it doesn't really bother me. But for some other people who require lots and lots of layers and big and bigger and bigger images it does limit you in that way should we say so anyway we'll hop out of that now cancel that and we'll head back into this one and we'll go into our time lapse replay well actually what we'll do first off we'll go into canvas information again we'll go into statistics that raven to finish took me 13 hours so as you can probably imagine so add 45 hours 30 hours you're looking at nearly 60 hours there so i want to do now if you go into our time lapse replay so anyway here here i am roughing it out I think maybe I've got more refined over the years, but I think I still work very similarly. You know, it's okay. I'll kind of loosely rough out what, what I'm doing and where I want everything and just build up as I go. Like your neck feathers, your chest feathers, the shoulder feathers, the wrist feathers, and the main fly feathers. And you can see, I think with this one here, obviously I was wrestling with it a little bit as well because I was going backwards and forwards, rubbing things out, redrawing things. The nature of the creative process, you're never always going to be happy with exactly with what you're doing. And you're better off taking the time to refine, you know? Because the more happier you are with it, then the better the image will be in the end. So if you've got the time, take your time. Right? Make sure your drawing is or painting or whatever it is as we want it to be. Right, a lot of time would be, I think I spent about eight hours <laughs> one day drawing the feathers. I think it was, was it on this one? I'm not too sure. 
But yeah, sitting in a pub for eight hours, drawing feathers, drinking pints of Guinness. Not a bad life, is it? Basically what happened here was, because initially I think I got to about this stage here with it before importing it into the main image, uh, to the other in the flat cap. So what I did was, I about two or three months ago, I saw this was unfinished and I thought it'd be nice to actually get it done and have it as a piece in its own right. So that's what I did. Finished the feet off at long last after about five years of neglect and finish the piece off there. So if we hop out of that, we'll go back into Odin and the flat cap and then we'll run this out quickly. This is Odin and the flat cap. This is the piece that was finished. Still think it's probably one of the few pieces I look back on and I'm still happy with five years down the line. That says a lot for it personally. I mean, a lot of people, you know, who've seen a lot of my work do comment on this as being their favorite piece of mine. And I think it's my favorite piece of mine so far. You know, out of all the pieces I've done, I'd say this is the one I'm happiest with. And hopefully in the future, there'll be another piece where I can also say the same for it. I mean, do I say the same about all my work? No. Do I, am I entirely happy with everything that I do? No. But on occasion, I do finish a piece and I'm happy with it. And this is definitely one of those pieces. So I think it's time we round this out now, shall we? Okay, so that was Odin and Flat Cat. You may be wondering why I titled it that. A, I like Norse mythology, and I've said that before. And B, I was a convenient model. You know, I don't, again, I don't have delusions of grandeur. I don't feel myself to be a god of any kind, if anyone's worrying about that in any way. Yeah, I just thought it'd be a cool idea, cool piece. And like I said before, I'm really happy with it. Happy enough to put it up on sale on the website, www.johnsdarkart.com. Sorry, I gotta do this, man. We gotta pay the bill somehow. So, again, uh, like always, two prints A4, A3, two prices, 45, 75 euros. If you'd like to pick up a print and support what we do, please head over to www.johnsdarkart.com and pick yourself up a print from there. It would be very much appreciated. Thank you. Anyway. To talk more about the piece and why I did it, yeah, I just thought it was a cool idea. I haven't listened to um, Neil Gaiman's wonderful Norse mythology. I've, I've eulogised about that before, but I'll do it again. It's a fantastic read and a fantastic listen if you're an Audible. Not sponsored, at least not yet. But yeah, I'm, I was, you know, I'll be listening to that and it just inspired me, the wonderful, the wonderful imagery within Norse mythology. And the fact that this is the first piece I completed on this iPad, because this for me was a huge investment, you know? Like at the time, if you include this little thing here, the second gen Apple Pencil, like you're looking at about 1600 plus euros of investment. It's a huge amount of money. The thing is when it comes to technology, and I'm gonna say one thing when it comes to technology, because on YouTube, technology, especially if you listen to a lot of tech YouTubers, and I'm not saying they're not valid, of course they are. You know, they have their place. But when it comes to like technology, when you're investing the kind of money that you're investing, whether it's the iPad, my laptop, which that was a pretty sizable investment. This is where I do a lot of my editing for all these videos. Uh, the cameras that we're using, the audio equipment that we're using. I mean, this is all significant investments. The thing is, I'm not one of these people who thinks that you should get the latest and greatest as and when it becomes available. Do it when you can afford it. Like the laptop, I bought it a year and a half ago and I don't envisage myself upgrading that laptop anytime soon. Even with the iPad Pro, I mean, it's five years old. It's still running great. It may not have as much RAM as the latest version, but as long as it's doing the job I need it to do and it's all in one piece and still functional, then I'm going to use it until the wheels fall off of it. And that's what I kind of encourage people to do. Like if you're going to make this kind of investment, because like not all of us can afford to upgrade every year. You know, I can't afford to upgrade and to a brand new iPad Pro every time Apple decides to release a new one. Upgrade my phone every time they release a new one. I mean, look, if you want to keep up with the Joneses, that's on you. But for me personally, I don't think, I think that's a hiding to nothing. Make the investment and make it work for you. Procreate, luckily, isn't a big investment. It's, I think, 10, 12 uh, euros at the moment. Um, I don't know what that is in dollars or pounds, but I think it's about 10 pounds, 12 dollars, 12 euros, I think. And that's it. And you've got this wonderful program with so much flexibility to enable you to create amazing artwork. And if you look at the variety of artwork that is produced from a variety of artists using the same tools that I'm using, I think that's amazing. I would encourage people to, you know, if you're looking for inspiration into digital eyes, go on your Instagrams, go on your TikToks, go on your YouTubes, go on even your deviant arts if you really have to, and see what people are able to produce. And hopefully that inspire you to produce work that, you know, you feel that, you know, is of a high standard because it is achievable on this. 
Um, if you don't want to use Procreate, you've got Adobe Fresco. The problem with Adobe, because I have to use Adobe for a lot of the work that I do, you're basically renting the software. You know, while it might seem that, oh yeah, you get all of these programs for, I think, 36, between 36 and 65 euros a year, I don't know. The big problem with it is like, there'll be a lot of stuff that you'll never use. I, I'd say like with Adobe Fresco, although I think it's like 10 euros a year, you're still better off going with Procreate for a pure art program. But if you happen to be in the, in the Adobe ecosystem, then yeah, by all means, go into Fresco. It's a great program. You know, it's a really good drawing program. I mean, I'll even, hold on a second. I'll even show you some of the stuff that I've done. Um, fresco and the reason why i don't use my fresco work in a lot of these programs because the get the whole time lapse aspect of it is a bit more of a faff to get to but what we'll do if i go to adobe adobe fresco you know i've produced some work that i'm pretty happy with using adobe fresco you know it is a really cool program it really is. Uh, like I said, the one big drawback with it, unfortunately, is it's tied to the Adobe Creative Suite. Like I said, unless you're unless you're paying for the entire Creative Suite, or you're willing to pony up ten euros a year, I think it is now. I, th I think it used to be ten euros a month, but they they kind of got to be a cop on and decided that um, ten euros a year sounds is a bit more reasonable for a drawing program like this. But I think that. You know it is a good program and you can produce really good artwork with it so i can recommend it but with caveats attached but it's with procreate you can just get on and create and once you've bought it you've bought it that's it then no more there's no more f future financial investment needed and it is the single most popular program on uh, for creating art on ios i do believe and for good reason so yeah when it comes to like making these kinds of investments i I just say that, look, don't worry about keeping up with Joneses. Don't even be worrying about what I've got and trying to emulate mine. Please try and stick within your budget. Don't overstretch yourself. If you're learning to draw, I would say do what I did and most other people who learn to draw. Get a pen and bit of paper. Learn how, learn the fundamentals there before you come on to, like, before you start spending huge amounts of money on fancy technology because the technology doesn't make you a better creator. Does it help in terms of the quality of the work that you produce? Yes, but that's only when you get to a certain level where you're best able to exploit uh, what the technology is able to provide for you. Do yourself a favor, try not to, like, A, don't keep up with the Joneses. Don't worry about what the latest and greatest is. Try and stick within your budget. If you're able to do all those things, you'll still be able to create amazing stuff, man. And hopefully you'll be able to share it with the world in whatever way you see fit. Anyway, my name has been John Clow. This has been John Starkart. And as always, you are very welcome. Till next time.